Hey y'all, it's Baby Bear from 1008, and I know it's been a while. I really wanted to edit the last SVS. It was really epic. There was so much battles. We did a throne battle. It was just a really fun matchup. However, it just takes a really long time to edit because it was over an hour of footage and have to transfer it to my computer and it's just a whole thing. So right now I wanted to show you some new updates that have come. Lots of updates actually. And this is the growth fund and as you'll see this is a $4.99 package growth fund and yes for $4.99 this is definitely worth it. Now Ebony is a little late to the game. All mobile games have growth funds. I'm actually really surprised they've been around for five years and this is the first time they're doing it. Um, this is fine. It's good for new players and older players. It gives new players incentive to get the gems because that's what they really want. The gems and the resources and older players get to cash in on their hard work and get a little something extra out of it. Now I'm not one to push any packs from Ebony, right? But the $4.99, the $9.99, and the $19.99 are probably the ones that would be worth it if you're an older player. Um, the $49 and the $99, you can't double coupon them. And while you're getting extra gems and extra RSS, most of the time when you're spending spending money on those types of packages, you want the double coupons and you want very specific packs. So for my instance, or for a lot of other people's instance, the trial Knights of Fire or whatever that thing is called, um, it has really good sub generals in it that have not really been sold um, other than right now. And I definitely recommend that if you don't have any of those sub generals to get those packs rather than spending it on the growth fund. Um, now, who knows with Ebony? I Who knows if they'll make it better at some point or change it up? Like, it sounds like they do a lot of stuff that hurts people retroactively. Ebony has to remember that people that have spent a lot of money prior to the new servers and prior to these updates, they have invested and when it looks like their investment has gone to inflation or has been devalued or now other people are getting rewards when they didn't, there needs to be a little bit of a balance. So this is one of the times that I will argue that Ebony does need to cater to the older servers or the older players that have carried this game for so long. So... That being said, let's move on to the next update, which is looking like it's a big one. It's these Blazons. I don't know if it's called Blazon, Blazon, whatever. But we saw the Skull Island and we saw the theme of King Kong and we were hoping that there was going to be a cute gorilla. And instead, there was a squid. <laughs> So um, now we're searching the map for this Squidmire, and I will say this, look for the higher level ones. We have really tried rallying the smaller ones, and it might just be luck of the draw, or it might be you're only going to get so many chests per day. I don't think they disclose that in any of the info, um, but I do know that after we have gotten some of these chests after a while, no matter what level of Meyer squid we have killed, we don't get any of the blazon chests. So I will show you what is inside these blazon chests. Looks like we only have five to open and probably killed like, I don't know, 50. Um, so we'll see what we got. Okay, so this first one, mounted troop load, mounted troop training capacity, not that great. Mounted troop load, mounted troop load, not that great. Ground troop training capacity, ground troop HP on monsters, okay. Nope. Ground troop training capacity, ground troop training capacity, I mean, I guess. Siege machine training capacity, siege machine HP on monsters. When will we ever use that? Siege machine load and reinforcing capacity with siege. Okay. 
these are very, very specific. And as you'll see, I'm clicking on these. And I guess what we do is we use these to upgrade. And so you can also lock and unlock. So apparently if you find a really good blazon, you want to lock that so that you don't consume it when you're trying to upgrade. Um, it just seems like another money grab. But interestingly enough, there are no packs for this. And so my team, my alliance, we went hard on these squid mires because, or these mire squids. Why is it called this? So we really went hard on these because if they're not offering it in packs and they're only doing it on these maybe limited time events, then you definitely want to go all out on monsters. And of course, it'll pay off. You need the monsters for hammers for the eggs. You need them for your materials and all that other stuff. So if you're going to go crazy, the Ymirs are going on right now. You can double up and do the Ymirs and the squids. And hey, it's a pretty good event. It beats the lame pyramid event that is going on that nobody does. Um, I'm just kidding. Nudie does it all the time and she always gets first and I'm really proud of her. And um, I think it is a good event for people that don't PVP and don't spend. It's, you know, it's an alternative there. So I'm just opening up these chests so that you can see what's inside them. And this is actually the best point that I obviously am going to title this video. Source of Life. This monster gives you source of life. Now, I don't think it gives it to you on the first one, but I think you have to go from level two and up. And once you get to your fourth monster, you get two in each. So you get two in the number four and you get two in the number five, which will add up. So definitely this is the most exciting part of the update. And for all of those who have to save source of life this is the event for you this is what you need to do in order to get your wings hoard these things get as many source of life as possible and then you can compete in the event and ebony if you actually make this an only free way of getting i have so much respect for you for actually listening and keeping the fair balance because this is kind of a gamble event and if it is just people killing monsters and collecting these and upgrading them or you know strategically dissembling them and upgrading them I think this is a really cool way and it is a huge redemption to the Helen event let me tell you your old players they get tired of doing the same recycled events but if you have something like this and you actually are making them grind for it it's going to put new life into the game maybe they won't be spending on the blazons but they will be interested again and it will kind of put some new life into that and if you're causing your spenders to actually have to be on the game and actually kill monsters and, and I know some people bought and whatnot, but again, you're making people actually have to manually grind to get these boosts. I think that's important. I don't think everything has to be a pay to win. More engagement means the more people on, the more people being helped to grow and to spend. So it is a constant cycle that you really have to think about. So the last point of this is the cake event has changed. Now, I don't understand why Ebony puts the cake castle, the general, and the sieve gear all on 10. I don't understand why they don't put the cake castle on 8, general on 9, sieve gear on 10, so that it opens up more levels to different levels of spenders. They have allowed you to now choose the civilization gear that you want from the cake castle. So even though that first civilization gear is on level four, you get to choose which one would be the most useful for you. So unfortunately, the Furizikin, Furizikin, okay, Fur, 
Frieke. I'm not even gonna does anybody want to tell me how to pronounce that um I unfortunately the one piece that I can get does not help my ground general at all so I will have to research uh, a better piece to get but now it's a little unnerving because now if the bow or the weapon and all of the armor and all of the good pieces are going to always be on 10 that's unfortunate right because before we were able to kind of get a cycle of things and they used to have the tai chi wheel i don't know when that's going to come back and i really hope it does because we can't all spend that amount of money just for the civilization weapon there's got to be a way to build that up and with the whole pay to win and free to play and low spender gap it would be nice to be able to collect civilization fragments right Just like we kind of collect scrolls, why not have civilization fragments in monster drops? Or if Ebony is worried about people who just do bots or automatic programs, then do it in a way that's manual, that people have to be on the game to grind for it. Or make it an event like SVS, like you get only one fragment if you win SVS, and then it helps your whole server. But do something that is actually helpful and makes people have to work for it and can actually obtain it and then be a little bit more competitive. Now, the other point that I wanted to bring up here that was kind of important to me is making sure that people who are doing these organized strikes really understand that what ends up happening is when you do an organized strike, the developers get wind of it and then they make pack drops super low. They do, you know, updates. They do all of these things that end up making it so that the strikers pretend they're striking but then because they're addicted they they buy the packs right or the new players will buy all of these brand new packs that are very high value and low cost and this happens quite a lot when there's organized strikes so here is the thing that is effective if you want to do any sort of organization the most effective thing is the rating in google app play store or itunes or any sort of review or any sort of youtube content or whatever it is the affecting new potential customers is what really hurts revenue and if you really want to make a change you have to make sure that the people that will start playing the game actually don't because that's where the money generates and that's why a lot of the old players feel like they're pushed aside or they're in these ghost servers because they're just not spending as much as the new players. Unfortunately, Ebony, you have to remember that these old players are what carried you for the very long time that you lasted. And the mobile game shelf life is very short for the developers that actually don't think about community. It's just the same thing as any regular company or corporation when it comes to retaining their employees, you're retaining your customers for the overall good of the experience. And if you have people who are five-starring your game and really enjoy it, and there is some strategy, and people get some sort of value or entertainment from it, then I think both sides win. So definitely consider and think about, if you wanna do the strike, fine. You know, it's your personal preference, Obviously, to stop spending on your own is going to, you know, maybe make a little bit of a dent, but those reviews, that's everything. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say on this update. I hope you guys enjoy hunting your squids and getting those free source of lives. Like, totally do it now before Ebony nerfs it because you know they will. So get all the free source of life that you possibly can and stay tuned for my next SVS video. Please be patient. It might take me a little longer, but I think it was a pretty good battle and really excited to share it when it comes out. So see you guys. Bye.